Jesus paid it all and Cornerstone.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful to be here. We're thankful for this beautiful day that you've given us, this day in March. And Lord, we're thankful that our hope is built on you and nothing less. And then we realize, Lord, that your son Jesus Christ paid it all, all to him we owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. Your son washed white as snow. Lord, as we come to worship you this morning, may we put our hearts, our minds to you. May we put all the cares of this world beside. And Lord, we ask that the presence of your Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us. That what is said and done here will be pleasing to you. And that your Holy Spirit will move mightily among us today. Now watch over us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning we want to welcome you if you're visiting with us. and We have some visitors and we're glad that you are here. And so hope it will not be the last time you have come. So please, we're glad to have you. We'll have our time of fellowship in a few moments. Please make a point to welcome our visitors. I also want to remind you that immediately following the services this morning, there will be a youth fundraiser barbecue luncheon downstairs. So be in prayer for that and... We'd like to invite everyone to come and to be a part of that. Also, a reminder, those that are part of the New South River Baptist Association uh, Spring Meeting, it will be this coming uh, Tuesday at Tabernacle Baptist Church. So please note that as well. Also, next Sunday will be a very special day in the life of the church. This is a day that we're going to culminate the women and men's contest. And we're going to see, I th- I'm kind of getting excited on this thing. I hope you are. I appreciate our fundraising committee and what they've done in preparing this and pl- planning this. And so this will be the day. And as I said, whoever wins, we'll see what will be done there. To let everything be kind of a surprise. We'll probably do it early in the hour so that we can announce the results. So we're excited about it. And so please come and please give to our building fund. We're thankful for the faithfulness and also the response that's already been done in this. And so continue to be a part of this. Only thing we ask you to do is the women in the men's boxes and put them in the right ones and please designate on your envelope or your check which one that you want it to go for. So again, we're excited about that. Also next Sunday, you're cordially invited to an evening of fellowship, praise and worship. That's on the 25th. And everyone is invited to dinner at 5.30 with a worship service to follow. This event is sponsored by the children's department. So you will be blessed. Hope to see you there. And Amy Wom is looking for bud vases by May the 1st. Also you have here the uh, Easter schedule that will be following on Sunday, April the 1st. Note the differences in the times. And we'll be announcing and giving you more information on that. But we are just going ahead and emphasizing this. Easter sunrise service, uh, Sunday school, Easter uh, at breakfast, then Sunday school, and then Easter celebration at 10 o'clock. We're looking forward to all the wonderful things that God has done. God's been good to us, hasn't he? And God has blessed us. So again, we rejoice with all this. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let's continue our worship by singing hymn number 140, Down at the Cross. Let's stand, please.
Just let them know you're glad they're here. which led us eventually to gangs and street gangs right here in Toronto. When I came here from Sri Lanka, gangs of like my background uh, were starting to form. There was two gangs, Case of Man's Click and My Click. My best friend was bully beaten up and the response to that was what changed everything in my life. Case of Ants Click, they went and shot my friend. Two weeks later, I ended up in prison, and little did I realize that nothing will ever be the same again. One of the inmates slid a book through the door, and when I opened it up, it was the Bible. Two months after my arrest, I committed my life to Christ, repented, and I believed in Him as the only way. After nine years, when I was released, our church plan began as we began to walk the streets and pray and ask God if it's His will to plant a church here, and, and so we did. Still in and out of jail all the time. I wasn't happy, you know, whatever I did, I wasn't happy. When I met Gajin, I couldn't help myself but grab him and hug him, just for him to know off the bat that I'm not the same person I was. A lot of people nowadays, when they talk about Case of Ant, they don't talk about the stuff he did before. Most of them talk about how he's changed and, and how he's living his life now. When you see that, and then, you know, you're like, oh, I want that, you know, I want to be like that too, you know, I want to change. For me and my family, the Annie Armstrong Eastern offering has faithfully provided so that Gajin and others like him, that they can also know that there is the realness of Christ. And so we believe that this is the harvest where God wants us to work to see people who don't know Jesus becoming worshipers of Christ. When we give to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering, we give to start new churches. New churches in the United States and also in Canada. And be in prayer for the church that's mentioned here, missions here and now. Offer an envelope or in your envelope boxes and also in the pew. So be in prayer for this and give to the Andy Armstrong Easter offer. Come on. We're going to have Samantha helping us today. Okay, remember what we did this morning? Yes, you are. Oops. Here, get to it. Get to it. Hannah? Well, Laura, while you're up here, you can help too. <laughs> okay. We've got our pom-poms. That's right. That's what I want to do. Hannah's doing. We've got our men and our women contest. Do we not? <laughs> well, who's giving the most money? This is our men box. This is our women box over there. So now I want y'all to turn around and look at everybody. Tell the men to stand up. Tell all of our men to stand up. Stand up. <laughs> all right. Y'all ready? Let's go. 
Go, 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 men. Go, 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 men. Go, 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 men. Okay, y'all can sit down. Have our women to stand up. Y'all ready? Go, 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 women. 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 Go, 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 women. <laughs> okay. I thought this would be fun and entertaining with it. As we're going to win our contest and all, right now our women are leading on our contest, but we don't never know what's going to happen after next Sunday. But I thought this would be something cute and entertaining with the children to break some monotony and all. So let's have our prayers. We'll do our prayers, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for the day that we've had today, dear Lord. Be with us as we do our contest and all. Dear Lord, we're doing it for fun, but we're doing it for the name of you. Dear Lord, be with Mr. Strickland. He does our message this morning. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay? Pastor, we men were totally clueless. <laughs> they were cute. <laughs> we continue our morning worship this morning by singing hymn, hymn number 575, I Will Sing of My Redeemer. Let's stand, please. This will also be our offertory.
my house. Father, we thank you for each one that's here and each home that's represented, Father. And we pray when we leave here today, we will have gained a great blessing. Lord, we ask you now to be with us as we have an opportunity to share with you a portion of the many gifts that you've blessed us with. May we open our hearts, Father. May we give back accordingly. And may each of these gifts be used for ongoing your work. For these names I pray. Amen. <laughs> will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountain. It grows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives me strength from day to day. It will never lose its power. Thank you ladies for sharing that. This time Mackenzie McLam is going to have our scripture and prayer. Our scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 5. And if you're able, please stand. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. May God richly bless you, may be seated. May God richly bless the hearing and the reading of the word at this time. At this time we want to go to the Lord with special needs. We have the prayer list on the back and are there others that you would like to share with us at this time? Tammy Lockamy, Renee Barfield Keith, 
Continue to remember Brother Billy and Miss Louise this time. And Melanie, and we remember Melanie will be having surgery on the 28th, and we'll be praying for you, Melanie. Others? If not, let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day and for everything that you've given us. We just thank you for allowing us to come to your house this morning and learn more about you and worship you. We just pray now that you'll be with those who were mentioned, Lord. You know the names and the needs of those who were mentioned. And we just pray that you'll be with them and just whatever need it is that they have, that you will just meet their needs. And we know that you can heal those who are sick and just be the peace and comfort for those who are going through hard times and those who have lost loved ones, Lord. So please just comfort them in the way that you can. Please be with us throughout the remainder of the service, Lord, and just be with us and help us to keep our hearts and minds open as we listen to what it is that Mr. Strickland has for us this morning and just help us to apply it to our lives so that we can grow closer to you. In your name we pray, amen. Oh 
thank you, choir. In Christ alone, in Christ alone we stand. What a wonderful time as we're looking forward to this time of celebrating Easter. Praise the Lord. Thank you for sharing that. I don't think Miss Cheryl minds me doing things. I have to screen it with her. She's going to look at me right quick. What are you going to say? <laughs> Cheryl likes to watch a channel called, on satellite called FET TV. And one of the programs on that channel is Perry Mason. Perry runs twice in the afternoon, and he runs in the evening. You go from the starts from the first to the last of Perry Mason. I don't watch it. The only thing I like the last 15 minutes, and I also like to see the old cars. Have some fascinating old cars out of the 50s and early 60s, you know, convertibles and different things. But you know, at the end, Perry lines up in the courtroom, just like that picture up there. And his, his uh, client is charged with murder. Well, the very last thing, Perry hones into it. And then the killer, sometimes, most, a lot of times women, will say, in a melodramatic thing, you know, old acting was a lot different than it is now. I did it. I did it. I killed him. I did it. I did it. And, of course, the cues was let to go, I did it. I did it. You know, as we get close to, to Easter, I think about that saying, I did it. Too often in our society, people want to play the blame game. Starting on the international scene through the White House, Congress, the state level, even in our own lives. One of the first games children play is what? He did it. She did it. If y'all had children, you've been there yourselves, haven't you? He did it. She did it. You know, that's the oldest game that's ever been around. Started with Adam and Eve. You know, Adam blamed, blamed uh, Eve, blamed God. Blamed the serpent, he blamed the serpent, blamed God. All of them got blamed, and God got blamed. No one else but God was at fault for all of these things. But you know, as we look at Easter, the question is asked, who crucified Jesus Christ? One one, who did it? Was it Pilate? Well, Pilate shared a part. Pilate is the one who realized that Jesus was innocent. His wife had warned him it had innocent blood. And Pilate said... Behold your king. In other words, I wash my hands of it. But yet Pilate was just as guilty. He could not absolve the guilt that he did. How about the scribes, the Pharisees? Yes, Jesus came and destroyed their way of life. Destroyed, in other words, rocked up. In other words, took everything that they're comfortable with, all their rules, their regulations, all of that stuff that they did, and shook it all up. And they could not stand him. They wanted him out. Well, what about Judas Iscariot? Judas really wanted a sire that would overthrow the Roman government, that would restore the old glory of King David and have Jerusalem and Israel like it was hundreds and hundreds of years before, who sold Jesus out for 40 pieces of silver. Yes, he had a part of it. How about the crowd? The crowd on Palm Sunday who was saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And on that day they were saying, crucify him, crucify him. We have no king but Caesar. Yes, all of these do it. And all of that. They, how about the soldiers? Yes, the soldiers were there. They mocked him. They put a crown of thorns on him. They beat him. They treated him horribly. They drove spears and spikes into his hands and into his feet. Yes, all of them had a part in the crucifixion of Jesus. But you know there's enough blame to go around. But let's look at it 2,000 plus years later. In other words, what about us? What part did we play in crucifying Jesus Christ? We too crucified Him by our wills, our actions, our tongues, all the things that we did, our attitudes. An old song says, Shall I crucify my Savior who bore the debt of sin? Shall I put to shame my Savior? Shall I nail Him to the cross? Shall I crucify my Savior? Crucify my Lord again. Once, oh once, I crucified Him. Shall I crucify Him again? Yes, we are all guilty. We did it, as that old melodramatic style says. We did it. But you ask the question, why did Jesus Christ die for our sins? He died out of the love for you and me. In the scripture that was shared in Isaiah 53, it says, we are told He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. 
and we hid his words, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. And surely he had borne our griefs and sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, afflicted. Yes, he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our sins was upon him. And by his stripes are we healed. So today, why did we crucify Jesus Christ? We did it. We know that. First, I want you to know that, yes, we all are guilty. And the reason we are all guilty, we were all born in sin. The scriptures tell us in sin that our mothers conceive us. Every person on this earth that's living there except Jesus Christ was born in sin from that sin of Adam that was inherited that tendency. Paul says, but since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection. In Adam all died, in Christ all made alive. You know, used to talk about what is sin. You know, here we've heard sin all our lives in church. We've heard it in different places. What is sin? You know, in vacation Bible school, I always use the act of a target with different marks. Like you take bow and arrow target practice, a gun target practice. And any time that you do not hit the bullseye, you are missing the mark. That is sin. And all of us are sin. All of us have come short. Of it. You know, the scriptures talk about in the scripture here different types of sin. Talk about iniquities. Iniquities are sickness of sin, sick, sick conditions in our world. The mass murders, the shootings, the terrorists, physical abuse, emotional abuse. All the wickedness and hatefulness of this world is rolled up into the sickness. As the song said, there's a bomb in Gilead to see it kill the sin sick soul. This is the kind of thing. And then it talks about transgressions. Trans means a cross. These are against others, against God, against fellow man, against all the people. You know, people say, well, whoa, preacher, I, I know about I'm not guilty of these ugly, hateful things. The crimes that we have are ugly. I try to live a good life. Yes. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't cuss. I don't do all those evil things. I'm not shooting and killing and all that sort of stuff. I don't rob and I don't thieve and all that stuff. But friends... No matter how good we are, we are still missing the mark. We all are guilty of, of sin. We're guilty of crucifying Jesus Christ. We hear a lot about the sins of commission and omission. A lot of times we're just as guilty of the sins of omission. There's sins that we've not committed, but sins that we fail to do. May we fail to speak a word for the Lord Jesus Christ. May we fail to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ. May we fail to witness him, to do that cup of deed of kindness in the name of Jesus Christ. And ultimately, we're afraid to put our trust in Jesus Christ. We put our trust in ourselves and we fail miserably. And that's sin when we frust, we threat, we worry, and all of us, including myself, are guilty of those things. We need to put our trust. But you know, we not only sin by our actions, but we sin also by our thoughts. The things we think, you know, Jesus said, if you wish a person dead, it's the same thing as pulling a gun and shooting them. In other words, we know our thoughts are not pleasing to the Lord. The Lord knows it. Talks about the secret sins in the Old Testament. Purge me from the secret sins. Friends, today we need to examine our hearts. The old song says, how about your heart? Is it right with God? That's the things that count today. Friends, today we need to have an attitude of encouraging, of doing for each other. So friends, we all remember. That last Sunday we talked about all of us have sin. You think about the Pharisees who brought a woman. We mentioned this last Sunday. Who was accused of a committing adultery. Says, Master, this woman's accused of adultery here. By the law of Moses it says she should be stoned. And it said that Jesus began to write on the ground. And one by one the accusers left. So there were none there. And then he said, where are your accusers? And she says, I have none, Lord. But then he said, neither do I condemn thee. Go sin no more. He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. We all are missing the mark of sin. And for that, it comes from being born under the law. You say, well, we don't born under the law. We think about the law as the law of Moses. The Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Covet. Honor thy father and thy mother. And yes, to the Jewish, they had the written laws. They had the oral laws. But friends, the problem with the law, no matter what it is, the law never redeemed one single person. Only thing the law did is to restrict. The law convicts. 
In other words, when you get a traffic ticket, it convicts you of driving 80 in a, in a 60 mile zone. In other words, any time you, you are convicted, you are guilty. You say, we're not subject to the law of Moses, but when we do not know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we'll be judged on the laws, all the laws of God. And we will come up short, for all have sinned and will come up short. When we stand before the law, the law will condemn us. And that's where we stay. So we don't need to be playing the blame game. All of us are guilty. You know, we can point our finger of scorn in all the different areas. In other words, we can get the log out of our own, out of our own eye before we do the speck out of our neighbor's eyes. But for the Lord, there are no excuses. There are no excuses at all. So we're all guilty. And yes, we're all under a death sentence. As that person said, I did it, I did it. They're condemned. And we're all condemned to die to the death sentence. There's no way around the consequences. An old preacher at another time wrote a book and had a saying, there's going to be a payday someday. You know, people in this world think they can get by with anything. They can lie, they cheat, they steal. They can do all of these things. They can mistreat one another, abuse. But friends, there will be one day, there will be a payday. And that's when we face the Lord. Face to face. And we'll be responsible for this. If we're Christians, we won't have to go through this type of thing. We'll give an account for the judgment seat of Christ. But if we do not know Jesus Christ, there will be that day when there will be a payday. In other words, the world may be fooled like people believe O.J. Simpson committed that crime. And I think he did either too, but that's just my opinion. But we'll all give an account. You know, God forgave made Adam and Eve from eating the tree in the garden. In other words, and they were told if they ate this tree, they would die. Well, the old serpent told you, you won't die, you'll be just like God. Well, they ate the fruit. Well, they didn't die a physical death at that time. Adam lived a couple of more hundred years after that. But the sad thing it is that they died a spiritual death. We're spiritually dead. I think probably one of the hardest things in the Scripture is when Jesus told about the rich man and Lazarus. You remember the parable of the rich man and Lazarus? It said that the rich man fared sumptuously. He had abundance. He had all sorts of things in his life to please him. And there was Lazarus, a beggar, that ate at the crumbs at the rich man's feet. It said, moreover, a dog licked his sores. And it said eventually that the rich man died and was buried. I'm sure he had the best funeral that money could buy. And then it said uh, Lazarus died and was carried into the bosom of Abraham. And then it shifts. It says, in being in torment, the rich man in hell said, lifted up his eyes and said, Help me, help me. Have Lazarus to come down and put a, his cool, my tongue, with a, a drop of water. And then he says, to go tell my brothers of this horrible place of hell. But then Father Abraham said this, that there is a great divide between you and me, between us and them, between heaven and hell, Good and evil which cannot be crossed. Friends, when we have the wages of sin, which is death, we cannot do this. We will all be facing it. In other words, we'll be ready to be sentenced. Without Jesus Christ, we all will die. But you know, this brings us to the final point. That Jesus Christ took our place. Isn't that a wonderful thing? He did it by His suffering. In other words, if we left the story right there about sin and wickedness, we wouldn't stand a chance. We did it. We did it. It's as people see it. But Jesus took our place. You know, God is a righteous God, and he could not look on the evil in the blackness of sin. You know, one time on the cross, Jesus said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The reason God had turned is that he could not bear the evil, the darkness of sin, the darkness of your sin, the darkness of my sin. He could not bear it. But Jesus took our place. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it said this, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we may be righteous in, of God in him. In other words, that we can be in right standing with God. God is a righteous God, we said. He cannot look upon sin. So Jesus took the sin of the world. Jesus came down from glory, took our place. Yes, we were the ones deserved to die. You know, that tells a tale of years ago, back in the 1800s, back when they had the old one-room schoolhouses, that there was a stern schoolmaster. They allowed more types of punishment then than they do now. 
And back at that time, that the schoolmaster, that some of the lunches had been missing in school. And he made a rule, said if whoever's caught with these lunches will have a severe beating, will be severely punished. Well, eventually the, lunch was, the lost lunches were found. They were found as a little scrawny boy who was sickly, who could barely stand, who was a very poor family who had no food. And the only reason he told me he had nothing to eat was well, he was getting ready to take the beating. This big strapping fellow says, let me take it. Let me come and take the beating for him. Today, we were bound by the school, cruel schoolmaster of the law. Paul uses that term of the law, being the old schoolmaster. But if Jesus came in and took the beatings, he took the punishment. He took it for our sake. He took our place. In 2 Peter 2.24, 1 Peter 2.24, it says, Who in his own self bear our sins in his body, on that tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes we are healed. He took the beating for us. But ultimately, he died on the cross. You know, the scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yes, Jesus Christ came for the earth, the express purpose to die for our sins. The old song says, born to die that man might live. Came to earth new life to give. Jesus Christ came. You know, we should have been crucified. We should have been the one on that cross for the wickedness and the evil of our sin. We are all guilty. We did it, but Jesus stepped in. Jesus stepped in and took our place. See, God loved us enough to send his son to die for our sins. As the song said, there's a line that's been drawn through the ages. On that line stands the old rugged cross. On that cross a battle is raging for the gain of man's soul or his loss. On one side stand the forces of evil, all the demons and devils of hell. On the other, the angels of glory, and they met on Golgotha's hill. The earth shook with the force of the conflict, and the sun refused to shine, and there hung God's son in the balance, and then in the darkness he cries, It is finished. The battle is over. It is finished. There will be no more war. It is finished. The end of the conflict. It is finished that Jesus is Lord. It continues to say, In my heart, is a battle still raging. Not a prisoners of war have come home. There are battlefields of mine own making. Didn't know that the war had been won. Then I heard of the king of all ages. Had fought that battle for me. And victory was mine for the claiming. Praise God. Now I am free. Friends today. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for me. Yes we did it. But he died. He took the penalty of sin. He took the punishment for us, the penalty of death. I praise to him, sings, I, my chains are gone. I'm now set free. Our chains are gone, the chains of bondage, the chains of death. You know, the scripture we use in the Lord's Supper said, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I praise to him, that song, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Yes, we did it. We did it. They say in a melodramatic sign, we did it. We are guilty of death. We are guilty of hell. But Jesus stepped in and took our place. Amen. He took the execution. He took the beatings. He paid the debt of sin on the cross. And he redeemed us once and for all. We don't have to go over it every day with a day of repentance, a day of atonement in the Old Testament. We have it. Jesus redeemed us. Friends, today, Jesus died for you. If you do not know him, there's no better time to come. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. You may not have that opportunity. If you don't know him, you'll stand before the judgment throne. And you will be guilty, for you will have done it. The song we sung around the altar says, Sing, O sing of my Redeemer. On the cross he sealed my pardon, paid the debt, and set me free. Aren't we glad Jesus set us free? Amen and amen. But we all did it. We had somebody to take the blame. And Jesus was that one. Thank you, Lord. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for sending your son to die in our place. 
We're not worthy of it. We're worthy of death. We've all done it. But Lord, we are thankful that you sent your son Jesus to die, to shed his precious blood on the cross for our sins. We're not worthy of anything that he has done. But Lord, today we are thankful for it. But Lord, there may be some here who are still struggling who have not accepted you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I ask you press upon them the need to come and to make that decision now. To make it before it's too late. Lord, we just ask now that you be with our invitation. Watch over it. And whatever we say and do will be pleasing to you. We give it over to you. And we again, we thank you for all that you've done for us by sending your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we ask in your precious son's name. Amen. Our invitation is one of the old hymns of the church at the cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for sinners such as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my soul rolled away. It was there by faith I saw the sight, and now I'm happy all the day. If you do not know Jesus Christ, please come today. Jesus died for you. He died on the cross to save you from sin. And friends, today there's no better opportunity. Maybe you're a member of another church you could serve here. We'd certainly love to have you by letter, by statement. Or maybe this message I did, it speaks to us. Our hymn number, Brother Josh. Hymn number 139. Let's stand, please.
God's people said, Amen. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. And God's people said, Amen. Remember our luncheon downstairs. We'll have a blessing for it here. Everyone is welcome to go. Donations are accepted. So keep that in prayer. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we're thankful for your dear presence of your power of your Holy Spirit here this morning. And Lord, touch our lives as we talk about the cross. We talk about the reality of your Son dying on the cross for our sins. And Lord, may we never forget it, that you did it for us. We ask this now as we go downstairs to bless us, to bless the food to the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies to your Christian service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.